Spiral Dynamics is a model that was developed by Claire Graves and by Don Beck and Christopher Cohen. And this model maps the psychological development and evolution of the human psyche. And it doesn't just do that at an individual level, it also does it at a collective level for entire cultures and societies across the last, let's say, 2,000 years of human history. And so what's interesting about this model is that it tells us that there's a very predictable set of stages that a psyche goes through, and these stages are defined by one's values. At each stage, your values are different, and they evolve, and they expand, they become more complex and nuanced with each stage. Think of each stage as kind of moving upwards. But also, these stages are not mutually exclusive in the sense that you move out of one stage and you leave it behind into another. They build on top of each other, so really think of it like a building a skyscraper. Each floor builds on top of the next. So what are these stages? They're color-coded to make them easier to remember. I'm not going to mention all of them. Spiral Dynamics is a very complex model. It can take you 20, 30 hours to start to understand. It's very nuanced. This is just a summary here, a basic summary. This is all you need. Stage red, we'll start there. That's the lowest one we'll be talking about here. Stage red, next stage blue, stage orange, stage green, stage yellow, and stage turquoise. So that's like six stages. So stage red is, you might think of it as the warlord stage. This is back during the ancient Roman times when city-states were attacking each other, conquering and pillaging and enslaving each other. It's that kind of mentality. A lot of that exists, for example, today with uh, drug cartels in Mexico. They tend to be very violent and they tend to resolve their differences with physical violence and domination. And it's a very egocentric stage. We might call it egocentric red. Once society has had enough of that, it transcends that stage and moves into the next one, which is stage blue. Stage blue is very easy to understand. It's the religious stage. These are the religious ideologues, not exclusively religious ideologues, but that is a good stereotype of it. Think of it as the, uh, the Mike Pence's of the world or the Ned Flanders's of the world. So think of Ned Flanders. I don't know, do you Zoomers even watch The Simpsons anymore? Do you even, <laughs> are, my, are my references outdated? Hopefully you know who Ned Flanders is. So, I mean, what is Ned Flanders? Ned Flanders is the sort of stereotypical stage blue. He is this sort of good Samaritan. He's a good Christian. He follows all the proper Christian, Christian protocols and rules. And he, he obeys all the laws. He's, he's very conscientious. He's very dutiful. He's very disciplined and very religious, and he's all about family values and following the proper norms, etiquette, res personal responsibility, part of a community, like a church community that he goes to. This is prototypical stage blue. Now, of course, stage blue is not limited to Christianity. It can also include Islam or any religion. It doesn't matter. That's just sort of like a flavor difference of what religion you happen to subscribe to. But generally, stage blue are theistic people who are God-fearing people who believe in an afterlife and are worried about upsetting their God, whatever God they pray to, and they take that stuff seriously. It's not a joke to them. That grounds their life. Then, once you exhaust the limits of that stage, we evolve to the next stage, which is stage orange. Stage orange is the materialistic, scientific, rationalist, logical, success-oriented stage. Think of, as the sort of prototypical example of this, think of uh, the wolf of Wall Street, or just Wall Street in general. People who are only after material success, money, fame, personal achievement, they're not constrained by religious morals because they think religious morality is just some sort of superstition from our ancestors. It's unscientific. It's irrational. These are people who pride themselves on their rationality and their scientific understanding of the world, and they subscribe to a, a materialist worldview. 
They look at the world as a mechanical system, like a clockwork that can be manipulated to one's own personal advantage. And so they do that. Now, what's important to understand is that each of these stages, you have to be careful not to judge it as good or bad. They're not good or bad. Each stage can have healthy and unhealthy manifestations of it. Each stage has a whole value set, and this value set is like a worldview, and it really shapes how you see reality. Each stage is like being in a different reality a bit. It's like having different colored glasses on with each stage, and then you upgrade those glasses and you see the world differently, and it colors everything that you do. It colors what you think is worthwhile to pursue, what you think is meaningful, what you think isn't meaningful, what you think is true, what you think is false, and so on. And these, cha these things change quite radically as you move up the stages. But it's important to understand that you can go overboard with any stage. For example, you can have religious fanaticism that goes into terrorism or into racism and nationalistic, like Nazism, at stage blue. If it gets out of hand, that doesn't mean stage blue is evil, just because Nazis are evil or whatever you might think. Likewise with stage orange, stage orange can be a healthy stage and it's all these stages are necessary, but it can also become toxic, sort of like you see in Wolf of Wall Street and some of the abuses on Wall Street and various kinds of predatory capitalism where drug companies are exploiting you and other companies are exploiting you and forming monopolies and these sorts of things and where in general our whole society becomes about just the pursuit of money and success and that becomes very shallow and hollow. And then once that stage is exhausted, you can move up into stage green now, stage green is the stage that Jordan Peterson has the most problem with, and I think his followers have the most problem with, which is, which is the social justice warrior stage. This is the stage of hippies, people who smoke pot, people who are more loose, people who are maybe quasi-spiritual, maybe a bit new agey, people who are concerned about equality and fairness in the world. Stage green is very much worried about all the oppression that is happening and all the inequality in the world. It's worried about the poor people. It's worried about the animals. Stage green has an expanded sense of compassion. There's an opening of the heart when you get to stage green and you start to realize how selfish you were your whole life, only worried about you or your little tribe. And so stage green expands its circle of concern to include not just oneself or one fa one's family or one's church or one's religion or one's nation, but the entire globe. Stage Green cares about not just one's own culture, but all cultures. That's why it's very multicultural. It cares about not just one's own race, but all races, not just one's own ethnicity, all ethnicity, not just one language, all languages. That's a very significant shift in perspective and orientation in the world. Stage green includes a lot of the socialists, a lot of the social democrats, a lot of the progressives, uh, some liberals. It includes um, the postmodernists, the cultural Marxists that Jordan Peterson rails against. That's all stage green. And then there's yellow and other stages. We'll get to that as we keep talking. So let's just work with these stages. Why did I just spend 10 minutes explaining this to you, you might think? Because if you understand this, you're going to understand everything that's going on with Jordan Peterson and with yourself and with the culture wars and the entire political situation that's been happening over the last five or 10 years. It's very, very helpful for making sense of reality. So why is Jordan Peterson's work so popular and why does it resonate with people so much? Because especially in Western developed countries, in America, in Canada, Northern Europe, the center of gravity of our culture and our society is roughly stage orange. Some people skew a bit from orange to blue, and some skew a bit from orange up to green. And so what we have in our culture is we have a culture war between these two factions. People have segregated themselves into these two factions. The ones that lean a little bit more green are fighting against the ones that lean a little bit more blue, and the ones that are a little bit more blue are fighting against the ones that are a little bit more green. So what's characteristic of all these stages 
is that when you're in this stage, you're not aware that you're in this stage. And therefore, when you look from your stage to another stage, especially if you're looking multiple stages across, or even just one stage across, the worldview of that person seems so radically different from yours that you tend to think of those people as stupid, crazy, criminal, or insane. Because it doesn't make sense within your worldview. For example, when a stage blue religious ideologue looks at a social justice warrior, gay, trans, whatever person, socialist, they look at that and they think that person is insane. And then when a when this socialist person looks back at the stage blue religious ideologue, he thinks that religious ideologue is very regressive and outdated and traditional in his worldview. And so both of them misunderstand each other. And then this is what creates conflict. 